Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, you can also, like, open up websites on my computer if you want. 
great. Uh, uh, hey, oh, what's up, everybody? It's it's me, Todd. I'm gonna be your host this evening. Uh, are we? Can can you hear me? Uh, it looks like I'm coming through. Okay, great. Wow. Uh, we we love this. Uh, hey, uh, um, I'm, I'm Todd Anderson. I'm one of the co-directors of SFPC. Really happy to be here with you for Meet the Participants. Uh, this is a event we run every every season for our classes at SFPC. We've been running it for pretty much the whole 10 years the, the school has been around. Some sort of event where people can come together and, and, and people can get to know each other and see who's studying in, uh, in different classes and kind of build some of those connections. I find it's, uh, it's extra important as we do online classes as it's uh, for an online class you can tend to just like really dial in for that set of hours and then kind of like be in your own life o outside of that. We like to create a little space where you can kind of reach across, see who else is studying at the same time. Who else would you run into in the proverbial hallway or, uh, or set of lockers? Who, who are the bullies, who are the cool kids. Tonight, we will find out. Um, uh, for, for those of you joining us online, uh, this is our first time uh, doing a, a hybrid event like this where we are, uh, we are in person here at, at New Inc. Uh, and with our live studio audience, so I'm gonna kinda, yeah, look at this live studio audience. Hello. Uh, and uh, we've got got some folks joining us on Twitch. We have some presenters joining us on Zoom. How many windows can we have open at the same time? We will find out tonight. Uh, gonna gonna jump right into it. Oh, I, I can uh, I can briefly show here. Uh, I, I'm gonna disappear for a second, but uh, uh, just we're gonna be hearing from uh, presenters from our our fall 2023 session. Uh, which has uh, five amazing classes. We have reading, uh, writing, and compiling zines, taught by Netta Bomani and Aaliyah Blackmore. <laughs> Give it up, Netta. We've got, we've got Netta in the house tonight. Uh, we, have, um, we have drawing data by hand, uh, taught by uh, Megna Delakia and Mia Coleman. We have the body as biomonitor with, um, with Fields Harrington uh, and uh, Shen Shen Wu. We have uh, the musical web, a returning class with um, uh, with Chloe Thompson and Tommy Martinez, and we have Infinite Video, uh, which is taught by Sam Levine and uh, Alona Brand and, uh, and Jonathan Gray. So we, ha we have uh, a really amazing uh, slate of classes, and you're gonna be hearing from, uh, from presenters from, uh, from those classes. Uh, and people will be telling you it's gonna be a series of, uh, of four minute presentations. People will tell you a little bit about themselves, maybe a little bit about their background, or potentially a little bit about what they're, they're bringing to their current class, some of the things they're, they're currently thinking about. Um, but yeah, without further ado, I'm uh, ready to get us started here uh, with our, our first presenter, uh, who's gonna be joining us on Zoom uh, for and a representing the musical web class. Give it up for Andre Antonescu. Woo! Okay, let's see if this works so i'm gonna share okay does this come through um okay everything good right uh did you turn your camera off no oh man that's no way i gotta gotta see you uh on youtube Why can't I do the side by side? Is that in a new version of Zoom? Okay. Uh, one second. Uh, okay. So we got one guy. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and run around. Oh no. <laughs> uh, all right. Or, uh, that's bad. Um, okay. 
All right, I'm gonna maybe drag over a, a tiny window. Uh, I'll just drag my window. Uh, and uh, if you're not presenting, could you mute your video just so I can uh, speak a little bit more easily? So uh, uh, the speaker. Thanks everybody, okay, it's happening. Good to go, Andre. Okay. So nice um, meeting everyone. I'm Andre. I'm in the musical web. I live in Bucharest, Romania. I'm going to try and walk you through a bit of my background, some of my past projects, and what I've been doing at um, SFPC. So I've studied computer science. I didn't really like it during college, it wasn't really taught well. I kind of pivoted completely to graphic and product design, probably like a reaction. So I started to do some freelance work in that area, self-taught. And then I rediscovered um, programming and computer science via creative uh, coding. Uh, so I will mention some of the things which are um, have been instrumental in my um, sort of development. Uh, those are open frameworks um processing which are some creative coding toolkits and also a uh, module lab this is a former maker space in bucharest where uh it's essentially a place where tinkers could meet to build like hardware software projects non-commercial very experimental uh, it was like a wonderful community so some of my older um things uh, i was really interested in computer vision and face tracking so I had this exhibition where this piece essentially tracked your face and left a, a mark on the on the um, on the two D plane. This was actually shown at the National Art uh, Contemporary Art Museum in Bucharest with the Module Lab uh, people. And then once I started getting more into the web part of things, I kind of looked at physics and drawing libraries, uh, and thought about how how would it be to actually combine them so how could you actually draw shapes and actually interact with the things that you that you draw so this is something kind of old it's on my github i don't know if it still works but you know the cold code is there so moving on into some of the more recent things i started looking into app development so I built pixel music, which is a essentially takes an image, creates this pixelated grid out of it, and outputs musical notes based on that grid. So I have a very brief video kind of like to show how it works. It's going to load up an image, and then it's going to play, play it back. So I don't know if that came through okay, but um, it's essentially used by ambient and sort of long form generative music producers. Um, and I've also been working a lot on graphic, uh, computer graphic techniques to kind of get different outputs, uh, more pixelated, more natural. And I've been posting these almost regularly on my, uh, on my Instagram. And so then we sort of come to why um, SFPC. Well, first of all, for the for the community. Um, second, I want to explore and articulate my own artistic practice. I feel that's something I'm lacking, and the the people here do very well. And of course, learn about new creative uh, mediums. So speaking of this, I'm going to show two things I've done so far in the musical web. One in the first week, we looked at the audio tag. Uh, and I built uh, something which loads up a, a website 
gets all the links in it and plays something based on the contents of the links. And it has this retro feeling because it's sort of an homage to a time where the web was a bit freer and more open. Uh, getting these types of links right now is kind of, you know, not something uh, super easy to do. And I feel that's something that we was sort of lost along the way. So that's on GitHub as well. And the last thing I'm going to show is sort of an exploration between sound and image using Max and Rainbow, two awesome tools we're learning about in the class right now, in which uh, I built this piece where the video morphs with the uh, at the same time as the sound, and it creates some interesting effects where this, the sound and the image are not so embedded um, uh, as you would normally think about. So that's kind of it from my side. Put some links here. I sometimes post on things on Instagram, and I have code for um, most of my things on, on GitHub. And um, pass it over to you, Todd. Thanks so much for starting us off, Andre. Very cool stuff. Um, going to bring up our next presenter here, who is Meghna Mahadevan from the Infinite Video class, also joining us from Zoom. Give it up for Meghna. Yeah. <laughs> hey, can you hear me OK? Yes. Cool. Hey, y'all. My name is Megan Mahadevan. Um, I am born and raised and residing in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, I'm really a diehard person. I'm thinking about the past, the present, and the future of the South of the United States. Um, so I'm really excited about this opportunity to kind of tell share a little bit of my story. I have thought um, about many different ways. Is it just my glitching? Yeah, your audio is glitching a little bit. How's this? Is this any better? Uh, still a little glitchy. Mm. Uh, can you hear me now? Sounds better. Oh, this is better? Okay. Let me try this. Okay. Um, just let me know. Um, one of our favorite topics of infinite video, um, the beauty of a glitch. All right. Um, so um, okay. So I am excited to talk to y'all. I have thought so much about how to um articulate where like the things I've worked on, where I'm going, what my interests are. And um one way I always tend to go is chronological, but that always doesn't necessarily make sense. Um, I also often try to um, to um, show things by skills, which also doesn't always make sense. And so um, what I started to do was just look at what really interests me and what my major, um, what things are that really pull me towards um, the things that I'm interested in. So, um, and these are kind of the different intersections that I found. Um, one, big one is technology justice is a pillar of something I'm always passionate about. The other is collective leadership, storytelling, gathering, and autonomous tech. And so what I'm going to share with you all is kind of how my journey to understanding myself as a community technologist and how I'm deepening that understanding. Um, so I actually started out as pretty um, conventional technologist. I went also to a technical school. I have a degree in engineering, and my first job was actually in Silicon Valley, which I always like to um, out myself pretty early on. And I essentially was consulting for Facebook during the 2016 election and during Cambridge Analytica and just saw um, really, really wild internal things happening at the company when many different scandals were happening. Um, I also realized over time that like my project was soft lobbying against net neutrality. And meanwhile, I was living in Oakland. Um, it looks like another glitch is the text, but you know, you don't need to read that. So that's actually a glitch I'll be grateful for. Um, but what you'll see here is a photo of basically like living in Oakland and seeing um, just copious amounts of homelessness and the impacts of gentrification. And so that really pushed me to um, one, understand the impact of the consolidation of power with tech companies and also um, 
what it means to be in a society that where we don't have a lot of consent over technology. And meanwhile, within my community, I started to kind of deepen my own understanding of myself and um, my passions and hobbies. And I got really into DJing. Um, so I'm pretty focused on and I'm pretty passionate about working in nightlife. Um, I work as a queer DJ and I collage um, music and I throw parties um, and I'm part of parties, particularly in the South, that are mostly for um, POC, trans and queer um, people and they're underground um, and it's really really beautiful and has shown me so much about essentially what it takes to bring people together um, how do you bring people together with care how do you um, keep a pulse on what the community needs um, what does it mean to hold space for people as you all are physically doing um, in New York right now and so through DJing, I was really able to get a stronger sense of who I care about, um, what the level of creativity is, and also um, what systems we don't have in place to protect ourselves. Um, and so within this like collective leadership pillar, um, one of my biggest endeavors has been New Currents Collective. And this is a collective that I formed um, after 2020, where we were eight folks um, and we came together, one, as a way to like build new ways of working together, but also um, particularly working on technology justice campaigns. Um, so we we're working on um, initiatives that were anti-surveillance, anti-incarceration and um, anti-disinformation and trying to campaign and work against these major technology efforts and things that are happening that were um, all surrounded by, but also how they uh, mostly and like more heavily impact black and brown people and black and brown, poor and queer and trans people. So through that, I was able to really deepen my understanding and um, analysis of technology. Um, and after New Currents Collective is when I actually came to um, the um, School for Poetic Computation, which I'm really excited to be here. I took my first class um, last semester at Solidarity Infrastructures, and I was able to build um, basically a storytelling device where I built my, um, what I'm calling a trans queer feminist server um, at my house, and um, basically turned this um, vessel, which is maybe now obsolete. It was like my grandmother's vessel that she used to collect water in when they didn't have running water. And you turn it into a storytelling object to tell the story of my family's history of how they eventually had access to running water and also their fears about a future without running water. And through this, I've been able to really more deeply understand what it means to um, build with autonomous technology. And it's something I'm really passionate about as a solution over, uh, I think running campaigns, et cetera, are really important, but I'm really excited about building as a form of destruction. Um, like a, another major project I'm working on with autonomous technology is um, with forest defenders in the Amazon. There's two different projects I work on where they're building um, new technology in order to connect the internet to militarize indigenous groups so that they can defend the forest. Um, and it's really showing me the importance and power of making technology your own. Um, so finally, I'm currently in Infinite Video. I've been really enjoying this and this is where I've been able to practice a lot of storytelling and its intersection with technology. Um, I have been collaging different videos from both like my history, my ancestry, as well as my current life and my nightlife experiences. And um, I've been enjoying being able to chop up a lot of like historical footage and um, that has uh, been um, existed in the past with South Asian queers um, and use the different Python tools to um, bring a lot of things together and try to make sense of myself in yet another way. Thank you. Thanks so much, Magna. Um, we are, I think, about to shift to our first in person presenter so going to make a little little tech shift uh do you have slides for me put it on a website Am amazing um all right let me just shift over here and uh yeah let's give it up for uh for maury coleman okay uh, uh hello everybody uh is uh I guess my face is my face up there. Can people uh, see me? Is your face up there? Great question. Yeah. Um, let's see. Oh, okay. Are you are you checking the the stream? Word. Um, 
Oh, okay. perfect. Okay, but the website is not up Yeah, there. the website is not up there. The website will be up there shortly. Um, cool. So I, um, I have two things to show you guys. Uh, the first thing is... Doo -doo -doo. Um, so I am part of Infinite Video. And I joined Infinite Video mainly because I wanted to... Um, I've done a lot of, like, you know, art projects with code. Uh, which way? Down, up, yeah. left, word. Yeah, and then you just click the key. Go right ahead. Uh, this is a real, real cool, normal way to do this. Uh, uh, word. Uh, yeah, and now you can look behind you. Uh, and then you switch through this. And okay. there. There you go. Okay, word. Um, cool. So... Uh, yeah, so I joined Infinite Video mainly because uh, I've done a bunch of uh, internet art projects. Uh, you can check out my website, wttdotm.com. Me and my friend, we make we make internet. Uh, it's a site where we make internet and other art. Um, but uh, the problem with a lot of our art is that none of that is visual. And so I wanted to join uh, Infinite Video mainly because I thought like hmm, it's a pretty uh, fun way to um, to start working with some kind of visual medium. So. Uh, two things I want to show you. First thing is um, just to preface it, like I, I'm a creator myself. Uh, I grow accounts as a hobby. I'm very interested in, in the idea of like growth hacking and just like the weird kind of, you know, uh, trends and phenomena that arise in videos that are supposed to go viral. One of the interesting things I think happens a lot is um, just like this emphasis on scale. And I didn't really think about this going into the class, but then once we started thinking about like how to make supercuts, um, I came up with the idea, and this is just going to be one, this is only, it's not an archive, it's one video, and the idea is to make this a larger project with all of his videos, but I think it's really interesting uh, to think about like how um, big YouTubers like Mr. Beast use scale and how quickly these th the things that they talk about scale. So um, this, you'll see what it does. Um, how do I get sound on here? Oh, we gotta add uh, sound capture somewhere. Sound capture. Oh, desktop audio. Yeah, yeah, it should be routing through the MVM. Oh, did I? Mute. Oh. I think the sound itself is not on. I think the sound itself is not. Oh, wait. Maybe we need to drag this over. Uh, Watch it on YouTube. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. There's the issue. And a million dollars, twenty million dollars, twenty million dollars, twenty million dollars, thirty million dollars, <laughs> the thirty million dollars, fifty million dollars, fifty million dollars, cost eighty million dollars, hundred million dollars, the one hundred million dollar, one hundred million dollar, one hundred million dollar, a hundred million dollars. All right. So you get the point. The video goes up, uh, and this is just one. Um, ideally, I want to. Uh, oh right, I have to go. Yeah. Word. Uh, ideally, Alrighty, I would like welcome. It I love that. Uh, ideally, I would like it to um, be more than just dollars. Uh, I want it to include uh, people, hours, and trees to see what scales the different units uh, these videos exist in. Uh, so that's one thing. But then the second thing is. Uh, I want to show you guys something really quickly, which is just the um, the one thing that uh, Infinite Video has been very helpful for is uh, figuring out how to work with FFmpeg, right? Uh, so uh, iPod Nano Video Spec Fifth Gen. Well, I hope yeah, there we go. Um, so the problem with I'm really obsessed with iPod Nanos recently. They're the smallest consumer device that's available in the mass market that plays video. And like they're the last device that was made before we started thinking bigger was better. Um, and so if you look at something like this, this is the smallest thing you can buy that can play an MP4, right? The problem, of course, is that um, if you look at this video support, this video spec is horrible. Um, it's made for you know videos as they were 10 years ago. And so what I've been doing is I've been using FFmpeg to, um, I'm gonna go back to full cam really quickly. Uh, I've been using FFmpeg to basically 
make a bunch of videos that can work on this, uh, on this iPod Nano here. And you might be asking why. Uh, and I'll tell you, it's because uh, if you can put a video on an iPod Nano, it's small enough to be made as an earring. And what that means is that you can have an earring that plays video. And what that means is that when you're talking to people at parties, uh, you can make them have to listen to you uh, by, by playing uh, Subway Surfers on your ear. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's a pretty dumb project, but I really want to be the only person in the club playing like 21 and 22 Jump Street, you know? <laughs> Um, but yeah, no, those are my, uh, my two things. Uh, thank you very much. Thanks, Mary. Um, are we, am I, am I showing up on the, on the stream? Do I, I am? Okay, cool. Uh, great. Uh, thanks for your patience. Uh, uh s sorry for my YouTube algorithm. Uh, let's, uh. Let's keep going with our next in-person presenter, who is Sim Hafferty, also from Infinite Video. Give it up for Sim. everybody, I'm Sim, and I have just a couple of projects and ideas so that you can kind of meet me with. Um, so this is something that I've spent like kind of my whole summer working on. Um, I've been calling it like a network release tool. Uh, basically, I just set up like a secure server that receives like text messages from people. Um, and uh, that's actually right here in the Raspberry Pi, and then it immediately sends it to this thermal printer up here um, that immediately sends it to this router. So nobody but whoever is standing in front of the tool can use it or see it what's going on on it. Um, and then another thing I did late last year that was kind of fun was um, like an experiment in like uh, playing with a game engine uh, called MTA Vend. I kind of want to revisit it sometime, but Basically, it was just like a mini game that um, featured different symbols that were connected to like social or infrastructural issues that uh, I find with the MTA. Um, and so you could select an item um, and you would receive it uh, from the vending machine uh, with like a factoid uh, that was related to that symbol. Um, yeah, and it was also kind of like a speculative design thing because, you know, we have the video ads now in the MTA, so I was like, what's next? The vending machines. And then as kind of like a personal practice and like diary, um, I've been making pixel art for the past few years. Um, and yeah, I don't know, it's just things I see in my daily life or memories I have, um, and I just kind of draw them and it feels really nice. Uh, so here's a halal cart I saw in Far Rockaway. And this is a view from some glass bricks. Um, in the background, it's just like a video that I took playing. Um, ah. And then, yeah, I made like a movie uh, that was also like a diary film where I kind of like experimented with pixel art uh, in a different format with 3D. Um, so that was pretty fun. But yeah, uh, hide and seek. This is kind of my general way of thinking about what I've been thinking about recently um so i've kind of been thinking about like how we can or how we do hide from carceral surveillance and information capitalism but also how we can seek out those systems and try and learn more about how they operate in secrecy um and i kind of like calling it hide and seek because hide and seek is kind of playful and uh, even though these are very serious things i want them to be forgiving to kind of look at and understand Okay, so, so now safety and hiding. Uh, I'm in the infinite video class as well, and uh, I've been exploring an archive that's pretty new for me, which are uh, vlogs um, or like video diaries of people that are preparing for the apocalypse or the end of the world. Um, 
And I've been looking at that in conjunction with uh, these like emergency preparedness videos um, that like institutions put out. Um, and I've kind of just been trying to understand another way that people can kind of hide or prepare themselves uh, in the face of uh, things beyond their, their means, things uh, that control the world around them that they have no control over otherwise. Um, and yeah, how they respond to that with structured safety methods specifically. So I've kind of just been studying that. But yeah, thank you so much for taking a listen and meeting me. Um, if you want, you can email me at second at org or visit my website, second.systems. So thank you. Thank you, Sam. Um, up next, well, I got, I'm just really getting all the tabs here. Uh, up next is, is Connie here. Uh, up next is Connie Liu, also from Infinite Video. Give it up for Connie. Yeah. Is this you? Uh, should we make this one for you? Um, hello, I'm Connie. Um, I guess by the oh. Sorry, I lost the thread. Oh, you're good. <laughs> enter slide. So I'm Connie, so by day, I guess I do product design, but besides that, I'm, uh, okay, this is also a very vague statement, but I want to do like more internet art, which is still in the works, but uh, I will go into that later. Uh, I'm starting, I guess like growing up, I liked making a lot of things in the way as like someone who is chronically online makes things, but um, I think I started out doing a lot of like 2D work, so I like used to really want to aspire to do illustration and like comics. I still do, but I think um, I'm more interested in just experimenting with uh, like the intersection of art and technology. Um, and so, <laughs> uh, so I like got into creative coding by accident in high school when I discovered P5JS, and I thought it was really cool because uh, I think before then I thought computer science was just making interest tables on Java for some reason. So this was really exciting. Um, and I guess I wanted to be at the intersection of art and technology, which was difficult to, uh, I guess, understand. So I took it quite literally in college. So uh, this is like a automated watercolor printer I made in college. Um, Cause I thought it would be cool to kind of like uh, do something generative, but also physical and also try and do Arduino stuff. Um, I also like was really lucky to uh, contribute towards P5 like through Google Summer of Code a couple of years ago, and so that also like introduced me to like kind of like the creative community uh, coding community, which I think is like really nice, and also why I wanted to do SFPC because I think it's a very like welcoming uh, community, and everybody is like very passionate about the things they do. Uh, can I go to the next slide? Uh, I'm also like trying to go more into like web art and I uh, try to like chronicle or I try to make something in JavaScript uh, a month ago. And uh, this is just kind of like, I'm just kind of interested in like generative like art um, in a way that like kind of reflects like my personal experience and provides some uh, meaning towards myself. Um, and I guess like other topics I'm interested in is I'm really interested in like permanence of memory on the internet, which I'll go into later, but like just the fact that everything uh, we do is recorded in that sense. Um, also just like co-creation with others uh, through the internet and also like how we can like embody like loving uh, each other and not just in like a romantic sense and other like digital forms of storytelling. Um, and I guess in relation to infinite video, I feel like I like chronicle or I used to like make a lot of vlogs and uh, like videos of myself, uh, I guess growing up of my hometown. So uh, I'm interested in like video archives and how to, uh, I guess, generate and like see parallels in these like archives I have and how things haven't really changed. So I can like 
play a very short clip um how do i do this so it's kind of embarrassing because i'm gonna mute the audio because i'm a little embarrassed uh this is like a home video made but that's why i wanted to take infinite videos because it kind of took me a while to stitch these clips together to make them seem similar to each other so it would be cool to do it in a very generous way but it's just like clips through my life and how like they're kind of like parallels but then it's like it's kind of like the same, but they're all taken to like different points in time and stuff like that. Um, so that is my unrehearsed four minutes. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> Thanks so much, Connie. Ooh, sorry, came around from the wrong side. Now I'm on the cable side. Uh, okay. Uh, so up next we have a uh, we have a couple folks um, uh, some of you may know from your classes uh, uh, SFTC is a very international school we have uh, people attending our, our classes from all over the world uh, here in, in New York but also on the west coast and Europe and Asia uh, which means that uh, this time is not it's it's the middle of the night uh, for some of our students we have uh, a couple folks who sent in videos to be able to, to join join us here tonight uh, so up next, I have a video from uh, Annapurna Kumar from the Musical Web. Uh, just give me a moment to set that up. Um, I think that's this one. Hello, my name is Annapurna Kumar, and I am a filmmaker based in Southern California. Uh, my focus is in animation, both CGI and hand drawn. Uh, and I also dabble in 16 millimeter filmmaking, sound production, and a little bit of coding. Uh, my personal work is generally shown in the film festival context, um, sometimes in the gallery. I'm taking the musical web class at SFPC right now, and I'm really enjoying it. Um, it's excellent. Uh, I took it mainly to generate audio content for a short film that I've been working on that's almost done. Um, so for this presentation, I'm going to kind of walk you through the project. Okay, so this is the opening shot for the film. It's based on a book that I bought on eBay from 1980s Soviet Union. It's a catalog of mirrors for sale. Um, I was drawn to it because of the luscious colors and the printing, um, the sort of maximalist layout, uh, and the fact that there are these strange female models every now and then interspersed throughout the book. They're generally not smiling or just barely smiling. Um, there's no information about them. Uh, all of the text in the book is simply uh, titles for the mirrors and dimensions and who made the mirror, but nothing about the women. So I was curious, you know, what would these ladies say to each other if they had dialogue? Uh, what if they were the ones making the book? What would that look like? So the film kind of reimagines this source material in a way that's maybe more fair to these women. The clothing is modeled on the original, but made more comfortable. Um, they're, they're seen doing more interesting tasks than putting on earrings or putting on lipstick. Here is one character that is emerged. I call her the Red Lady. Uh, her hair has not been finalized, <laughs> um, but I think she's getting there. Um, this lady I call Black Turtleneck, she's also based on someone from the book. Uh, she's been recast as a printmaker. Um, I'm working on a kind of over-the-top conference room scene where all, most if not all, of the women congregate together and they talk about the book and talk about whether it's ready to print or not. Um, so I think that'll be a fun scene. All of these are obviously in progress. Uh, I've also been doing macro photography of the original book, getting some of those nice textures and colors. Um, I've also been distorting the originals by doing tape transfers to get some of those um, glossy edges and 
the tooth of where the tape dispenser is cut the tape. Here's a really rough GIF. Um, there are some issues with the with the frames going out of sync and out of frame, but I think you get the idea. On the left, that's uh, that was the source material for the GIF we just saw. Here's another image that I really love from the book, which I turn into a very large tape transfer, and the animation ended up something like this. And that is my last slide. Thanks for making that, Annapurna. Um, okay, I think we are ready to shift back to to Zoom, where uh, up next we're going to be hearing from uh, from Ender Minyard from the Reading, Writing, and Compiling Zines class. Give me a moment to shift us back over. Um, okay, and let's get the view. Ender, are you here? Yes, I'm here. I have to. Uh, I have to go into system preferences. I'm so sorry. Uh, That's okay. I'm trying to share my screen. I've been there. Okay, I have to reopen. Take your time. I think I think I'm losing them. <laughs> uh, better hold on wait. There's there's a way. Okay. That's not bad. Okay. So you can just kind of do a little bit of this. But are we is this anything? <laughs> Getting smaller is. Oh yeah, and then the you can see me in the background of my own camera. Wow. Um. You know. Uh. I think maybe we should move to the next presenter, and then Ender can hop on. Or oh, unless they're just back right now. Uh, I was wondering what would happen while I was gone. I'm thinking about how I'll never know. It was, okay, it was um, can I share my screen? <laughs> Glad you're back. Um, is there a screen share out here? Oh, hello. Hello. Okay, am I am I good? You're good. You don't have your camera. Okay. Are you? okay. So I did not know that everyone was doing a presentation with slides. I did not prepare slides. We were talking about who's the cool kids. I'm not cool. I don't have slides. This is a zine I made during the reading, writing, and compiling zines class. Uh, it's a zine about decolonization, and it's choose your own adventure. 
So I was thinking about how to make a digital version of this zine that is choose your own adventure. And I ended up actually making a video game, which is at enderversing.itch.io. Uh, you can see this demo here. Um, you can download it for free if you have a Mac, but I'm also just going to show you the game right now. And you get to see my lovely desktop. So this is a game where you play a hacker and I would like people watching this to give me feedback or offer collaboration. There are two ways that I want to collaborate on this. So let's start playing the game. These are the levels, this is level one. So your first mission is to hack your manager. You work as a computer support consultant at a migrant camp where protests have erupted due to the lack of protection from floods and other environmental hazards. Your manager, Sandy, suggested more budget cuts to flood prevention despite these protests. So now you're going to hack your manager, Sandy, to see what's going on. And this is a fake news clip. I really enjoyed making fake news for this game. Um, so this is going to be a sort of spreadsheet showing what you've done so far. And then this is how you can attempt to hack your manager. So first you can try denying service to Modbus server reports. And when you do this, you figure out that it didn't work. You're not done. And this is the generated password made by this basically fake hacking simulator. And then these are all the options that you have. And here's the correct answer. You need to brute force your manager's password. Then you can go to the next level. Her password was hegemony. So this is a level where you hack the cop's phone number. In this game, you're definitely a mercenary hacker, okay? There are no rules for this hacker in this game. So there's a warrant out for your arrest because you exposed your manager. And so now you're hacking the cop's phone number to hide your tracks. You don't want anyone to turn you in. So again, you try denying service to Modbus server reports and you can't get in, you can't hack a phone. Um, so the correct answer to this one, I believe was actually a telephone denial of service. Their password is we Heart Cops. It was port 22 and you're done. You can go to the next level. Um, I actually wanted this to be more interactive. Like, can people tell me what they think about this game? Am I allowed to do that? <laughs> No? Okay, let's keep playing. <laughs> uh, what was that? Okay, so we're going to play the whole video game apparently. So now you're going to hack the cop's phone, but this time they actually have basically improved their security. And so you have to hack them again. And this time, you know, they brought the phone line back up again, and you have to say, like, what can I do to hack them again now that they know I'm a hacker and I'm targeting them. So you tried to deny service to Modbus through reports that didn't work. So now you can try to attack not only the telephone line, but also the session border controller which is basically this technology that protects telephones from getting denial of service attacks. And now you can go to the next level. Their password was we heart thin blue. Okay. Um, I wanna see the chat. Okay, <laughs> can, you, can you guys play my game? Okay, so my game is here. It is at enderversing.itch.io. And I actually don't feel the need to play the whole game here. Uh, you can play it yourself. You can download this game here and play it. I think that's genuinely the end of my presentation. Thanks so much, Ender. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm sorry we, you couldn't hear us from the audience, uh, but uh, ho hopefully some folks in, in Twitch chat might be able to uh, to give you some some feedback or or just get back at, at Ender through their their itch page. Um, up next, we have 
Uh, joining us also on Zoom, we have Carlos Piscina from the Musical Web. Give it up for Carlos. Um, hello. Uh, let me try to screen share. Um, Carlos Pesina from Mexico, uh, right now located in Brazil. Uh, yeah, I'm taking the musical web class and I'm going to tell you how I became interested into this topic. Can you see my screen? Uh, it's still loading. Oh, okay. Okay, now we, we see your screen. It's showing the Twitch stream. Okay. Yeah, so I've been always uh, into music making, but never been, I've never played any instruments. So maybe for the same reason, I've been interested in how music is made differently in different parts of the world. So I've been collecting um, mostly traditional traditional music from every country. I used to have this radio show where I was playing one song per per country and I played about 90 countries. So one of my favorite types of uh, traditional music is uh, this music from Mexico. It's called Son Jarocho. And the reason I'm uh, really interested in this music is because uh, this music involves uh, the whole culture. Um, it's this is in uh, special story called Fandangos. And the thing is, uh, everyone. Uh, Carlos, you're breaking up a little bit. We're having some, some yeah. trouble hearing you. Yeah. You can also participate by dancing or. Okay, yeah, is it better? This is a little better, yeah. Okay, cool, and we can see your screen. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, so so I became interested in this type of music, especially because it's made collectively. And uh, I thought it was uh, something interesting to explore. So I, I uh, created this uh, web app here. Um, to um, make like interactive concerts. So the idea is that people could enter to his website and play sounds during my music presentations. And depending on the music I was playing, this will make like different sounds. Um, yeah, it was a nice um, experiment. It had a, a lot of failures, uh, but then I took this idea to to a project as a starting point, point for a project in a master's uh, about uh, user interaction. And as part of the research, I asked musicians from different parts of Latin America what they thought uh, the concerts would be from 100 years uh, from now, in the future, and took some of these ideas. And then I started this, uh, this, um, platform to to make um, virtual concerts. It's kind of like a video game you can actually join. And uh, I cannot post links, but it's a, uh, this is the, the link uh, is OXO with three X. And so the idea is that um, it has uh, some live stream audio and you can see the other people that is connected you can chat with them this was pre-pandemic so i think it was hard to to picture doing virtual concerts back then uh, but then when the pandemic came uh, i decided to to make my birthday party here and i just uh, to make like a 3d space quickly i downloaded this uh, 3d model of an, an oxo which like Mexico 7-Eleven, maybe. So it was just a, a bad joke. But then 
it, it became kind of like a local success at that moment. Like many people joined from different countries to to my birthday party, and then uh, I was asked like one late one week later to do a a virtual concert for a big music festival in Mexico and and some other uh, parties. Uh, so always. I was always changing like the space, the three space like here. Uh, it's like totally different. And I was also experimenting with some like audio 3D installations like this one. Oh, and And um, yeah, that, that is uh, basically it. So I'm really interested in joining this class and see other people's work and and see um, and get inspired by by their ideas as well. I think for me, what's more interesting about make music in the web is the possibility of uh, doing uh, the music collectively and um, inspired by the song Hard Show type of music. So excited to to be joining this class. Thank you, Carlos. Uh, and I think we are back to our, our next set of, uh, of in person presenters. Before we bring our next presenter up, I just want to do a quick uh, uh announcement or or plug uh which is for oh, let me see if the uh, make sure i have the right stream okay oh hey it's me again hello um which is just announced today uh this is for yeah it's for software for artists day uh, yeah <laughs> So uh, uh, SFTC uh, is organizing Software for Artists Day at, uh, at Pioneer Works in November, November 18th. Uh, so it's going to be a one-day conference from 12 to 6. We have some, some really amazing presenters from the SFTC community. Uh, we have uh, Ayana Zayer Cotton, Sewe Wang, and Taylor, Taylor Levy, Camila Janan Rashid, Fields Harrington, Lin Yun, Lillian Yvonne Bertram, Tika Brain, Asha Tamarisa, Rachel Uwa, Romy Ron Morrison, and more to be announced. Um, there's going to be also some some workshops and, and tabling from other, other members of the SFPC community. Uh, it's going to be a whole lot of fun. Uh, please, please come out on no November 18th, Pioneer Works, 12 to 6. It'll be, be a real good time. There's also this incredible book. Uh, no one has their their book with them do you yeah uh, yeah can show uh yeah we have we have secret advanced copies uh but um our, our colleague uh zainab aliu uh edited and helped produce this amazing book with uh, uh which uh, uh you cannot you cannot have our copies you must acquire your own uh, uh and those will be uh, uh available at the at the event you can uh, you can pre-order them now um, that's all. I just wanted to tell tell you all about those. Uh, I hope hope you'll check it out. Um, okay, ready for our all right. Ready for our next presenter. Uh, gonna fire. Uh, oh my gosh! I have so many windows open. It's so cursed. Um, let me close that. Um, Okay, great. Okay, one second. Okay, uh, our next presenter. There's my my lineup. Uh, is uh, Alex Beige. Give it up for Alex. Go, Alex! Yay! Uh, um, okay, I, you sent me a. Alex, Alex, <laughs> Alex. Thank you, Ender. <laughs> um, okay, here we go. Here's your. File and Figma doesn't have presenter view, right? Mm -hmm. All right, let me let me mirror for you. Uh, I think that will be less weird. Um, 
one second. Uh, I think that the Figma tab crashed and maybe I have too many tabs going. Um, okay. Oh wait, there it is. Okay. Uh, one second. Brief, brief text change. Gonna do something chaotic. Uh, let's see how this affects the stream. Okay, we're mirroring. Uh, and now, let's see. Okay, and then, okay. Yeah, all right, there, we're good. Yay! Okay, I'm gonna be talking fast to get through this. Um, but yeah, I'm Alex Beige. I'm taking the reading writing, writing zines class. Thanks so much. For Woo! That. Okay, that's my last one. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and yeah, I am a freelance. Oh, the reason I was taking the class is because I'm really interested in like subcultures and like the kind of radical honesty that I feel like zines kind of enable a lot. Um, so yeah, I am taking the reading writing scenes class. I'm a freelance web designer and developer. Um, and this, again, just walking through this. Um, yeah, so this is my Instagram bio there. We're going to be focusing on this part. So as far as what I've been doing lately, uh, my family and I were recently doxxed by internet Nazis. That's what this part is here. I also recently um, finished a play called Black Pill to Blueprint about digital racism. And I also just premiered a short film earlier this week called Attention Deficit Hyperant at the Failed Film Festival. That is me as the um, ant in the show. All right, so these are, my, uh, these are my buzzwords here. And I'm gonna tell you a quick story about my days as a casual cyborg. And um, you'll get a glimpse, glimpse into the world of quantified self, psychonautics, and amateur pharmacology enabled by the internet. That's what we're going to do today. Um, let's begin. Okay, um, so the story has humble and embarrassing beginnings. I, it starts with a monster energy drink when I was 13, okay? Uh, I had my first and it changed my life. I felt miraculously in control and uh, focused as though I could do anything and it helped me sleep amazingly. So for the next four years, I would drink a monster energy every day of my life. So uh, that's, that's what we've got up here, there's a lot of them. Um, and this posed an issue, namely because Monster did not do my social anxiety any favors. So a Google search led me to L-theanine, which is a green tea extract taken alongside caffeine to counter the jittery effects. And um, that is the gateway nootropic. Um, so nootropics are smart drugs that um, augment your mental faculties and emotional experience. They're used by students, gym bros, work cells, and psychonauts looking for their next high. They revealed a beautiful online world of barely legal um, gray zone substances, amino acids, and research chemicals that inspired me to major in chemical engineering. So that's kind of the timeline here. This is when I started making shampoo. Okay, um, so now we're getting into personal research, the second part of the story. So we're talking about quantify itself, all right? These are my graphs up here that represent a, a little bit of me. Um, one thing that everyone on the Reddit page for nootropics had in common is that they were really interested in self-experimentation. Like, um, in of one studies about supplements and varying dosages and speculating about the interactions between them. Um, and yeah, sometimes doctors just don't cut it. And so as a casual cyborg, I grew up ordering chemicals online marked for research purposes only, um, self-research. And why shouldn't I? You, you learn that there are substances that are prescription in other com countries and completely over the counter here and vice versa. And all it takes is an added hydroxyl group to the insomnia drug um, modafinil to make it possible for a 17 year old to order it on the clear web. Um, my body, my precursors to pharmaceuticals. Okay, and now we're getting to the last part. So my story has a point. Um, one narrative that would pop up on the Reddit page over and over was this idea that, um, yes, is that someone was saying like, wow, I tried all these supplements and drugs, and it turns out I just have anemia, or uh, sleep apnea, or PTSD, or OCD, or ADHD. 
And at some point last year, I realized that all of the um, nootropics that have been game-changing me were stimulants or interacted with a dopamine system in some way. Um, I'm talking NAC, I'm talking caffeine, adrafinil, or my favorite, phenylforacetam, which was used by um, Russian cosmonauts to help them stay awake in space. And it got me through my years um, at Columbia before I dropped out and um, succumbed to undiagnosed ADHD. Um, but I, I, I love them. Uh, here's their photo here. Okay, God bless them. So anyway, I, I realized this and talked to a psychiatrist and started ADHD meds. And now I don't need any of the near 60 supplements I've bought over the last uh, decade. But um, yeah, I still keep them to remind me of this golden age of self-experimentation. Um, I'm Alex Beige. Please see me afterwards for drug recommendations and medical advice. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. Incredibly informative presentation. Um, all right, let me switch over. Let me make sure you don't see all my email and everything. Oh. Our, uh, our our next presenter is r is right here. Uh, it it is Shelly. I assume yeah. Uh, Shelly Shang. Give it up for Shelly from Reading, Writing, and Compiling Zines. Okay. Um, and did you send me yes. uh, a thing? I think I have it. Oh wait. Oh, wait. Let me. Do. Oh, you can see the lineup. That's how you knew. Um, Let's do here, and then let's put it to the stream. Thank you for your patience. OK. Hi, I'm Shelly Zhang. And I, I really love this quote. It says, it takes three generations to make a musician. The first to leave poverty, the second to go to school, and the third to master an instrument. And ever since I was a little girl, I always wanted to be an artist. And I would tell my mom that, and she was like, yeah, you could be an artist, but your life is going to be very, very difficult. And I think it's because uh, she had an understanding of this quote because Neither of my parents went to college, and uh, uh, I came from three generations of first-gen immigrants. So a lot of marriages of you know people who just first came to the United States. Uh, recently, so all these uh, slides are from my social media, and I, I think it's a great way to kind of showcase what I've been up to, just because you know it's interesting how we share our lives on using social media and tech. And here was a reflection. I'm not going to read all of it since time is short, but uh, I do like this uh, end piece. Uh, I am only here because of all the work and suffering I went through in my early adulthood, but I'm also here because I got lucky. Work and suffering are just lottery tickets with terrible odds, and most people don't win. Okay, so here's some history. Here's all the jobs I've had since I was 16 years old. <laughs> And uh, basically, to even get to that college and be able to graduate was very difficult for me. Um, so like a lot of people, I was very gun ho I wanted to go to college. I worked at McDonald's to pay for a pre-college program to go to an art college. But luckily for me, I graduated during the 2008 recession, and I lived in Michigan, which was one of the hardest hit uh, states. So basically, and my parents were in huge medical debt, so that wasn't great. So to try to go to college, I went to community college to you know, save money and to hopefully transfer to uh, a better school later on. But it was so difficult to survive and to like, you know, live a normal life that eventually I was like, okay, I can't do this, it's really difficult. You know, there, there'll be days where I didn't eat, uh, days where I could have put uh, money, gas, my car, it was just very difficult. And you know, I was in a, not a very cool city, not like New York. I was in like a little Midwestern uh, kind of like town. And I was living with like four roommates and I rented a little closet that wasn't even a legal room or anything like that. So joined the military. And um, 
And uh, um, I was able to finally graduate college, but I went to so many colleges <laughs> and dropped out of so many colleges because I never had the opportunity to go to college without working. I always had to work to survive. So uh, eventually I did graduate, which is great, um, but it, was, it took a very, very long time. So when I was in the military, uh, I got to live in Germany, which is amazing. And I worked in avionics, so I worked as a technician on aircrafts, basically electronic countermeasures. Uh, that's like chaff and flair. But uh, it, was, it was a great experience, and I was able to get my associate's degree. And by the time I left the military, I, I, was, I was still kind of scared of going to school. So I actually went to cosmetology school and got my, my license. But being a hairdresser is very difficult. So, but it gave me the confidence to finally go back to school. And because of the GI Bill, I was able to do that. Um, uh, while I was getting my bachelor's and master's, I always worked. Um, uh, before, during one of the times when I dropped out of school, I just went to a, a boot camp program. So I was able to work as a programmer while I went to school full time. So at, when, during my bachelor's and master's, I was working full time as a programmer and I went to school full time. And yeah, I basically was so busy and working all the time that I had no free time. <laughs> And I, I did a lot of cool things. I did like uh, engineering and community service in Vietnam because I lived in Japan and while I was going to school. It was all great. I had a really good experience. Um, and eventually I was able to uh, start working at art museums and then I moved to New York because of a job. But it's basically thinking about how like eight years ago I really wanted to be an artist. I always try to work with artists. I did all these opportunities, and now I get to like work at this art museum and everything that I went through. Um, so here's oh, there's no sound. Can can we put? Uh, oh, okay. So. So these are the artists that I've been working on. And then let me, these are, so I started doing TikTok. After painting these magazines during the stands, pandemic. I wanted to store vinyl in them. So I 3D printed some grooves to go on the bottom of it. And then I My started sharing it on TikTok. small and not quite and wide enough. Really, but really, really after really I redid it, it, I think the second print turned out pretty good. Electronics of the LGN and system um, because is in I worked in avionics, I had like a hardware background. So I, and I, the I, I knew how to solder, easy, I knew a lot of these things. So when I basically, and yeah, basically took my programming knowledge so and my hardware knowledge and I started old. doing like these little TikToks about that. I recently made a Carl Klopp video dirty mix. So you're just kind of seeing my journey. The project was pretty fun to make. Plus, I wanted to explore video art, so I thought this was a great intro. I ended up using a VCR and the PlayStation 1, and I think it turned out pretty good. Parappa looks pretty awesome. Hey, I'm Shelly, and I love retro tech and video games. And I sometimes also build projects, as well as travel and go to cool events. And I'm a huge animation fan. Hey, I'm sh <laughs> Hobbies. It's also retro tech and retro video games. So I started kind of doing that content as well. And this is just talking about some of the experiences that I had with art and my practice while I've always been working full time. I went to the library yesterday to attend a live coding So game. what happened so here is I started live coding. Like and it's actually funny I how I started live coding. I, later went I went to, to this to meeting a at a library and I just thought it was a regular tech meeting. I had no idea what live coding was. And that's kind of like how I started doing creative coding. Because to me, like from my background, I never thought about creative coding. It was always like, you got to code to survive. <laughs> 
So this is when I, living in New York kind of gave me the opportunity to think of coding as art. And that's when I started doing more live coding and started doing more tech as art. And that also included that organizing shows went so well. and doing art installations. installations, including mine, which had frogs and bees, and some live coding visuals. And we had a ton of different workshops. We also had performances, but I'll talk about it next time. So the live coding event that helped. And then I also started to perform as well. I had my first live coding performance. And yeah, I was on the floor because I had too much equipment, but it was so fun to create visuals. And all the other performers did such an amazing job. It was such a fun night. I had my first life. The event yesterday went so well. I brought the Casio Loopy and I had my live coding set up. And it was such an amazing night. I was with Melody who performed the music and I created the visuals. Hey, let's do some video art with some simple analog circuits. We have our breadboard and some capacitors. It's pretty cool. You could do a lot with some basic electronic parts. I had another live coding performance, <laughs> okay. this time at Wonderville. Um, and I so... We'll go through here. I recently I had another live coding performance. So I started and working with zines different. as well. A narrative, and we even made a zine for it. And that's why uh, coming back I've to SFPC, and and uh, since I started integrating zines into my practice, so been I really want to explore how more I can do that. Job, and it's honestly so yeah. So hey, um, you walk with me once I started well, this practice, I started thinking, how can I so tell my own stories through zines? So Jane wrote the story I feel like I have a lot of experiences that I would like to tell to the world. To and them. it's kind of like trying to, hidden. I never really saw myself as a writer. So yeah, York, and I'm trying to uh, think of myself more as a writer. So how do I take my visual knowledge and the kind of visuals that I do, and how do I incorporate writing with that. So I'm very excited for this class. And yeah, that's about me. Thank you. Thanks so much, Shelley. Uh, I think that was our, uh, our last uh, in-person presenter. So I'm gonna do one last. Oh, we have one more. Oh, is there what, what's her name? Tiani. Oh, Tiani. Okay, I I didn't get an email for you. Um, are you are you good to go now? Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh let's uh let me just get set up here for one second. Um, do you, what do you have for a uh, for file? Um, oh, it's it's in your email. Um, okay. Um, um, let me, could you, uh, could you email, send an email to me? Um, and, or, oh, do you, you don't have a computer? Oh, uh, no, I don't. Um, okay. Um, one second, we'll get set up. Let me make sure we don't have too much going on on the stream. Um, all right, folks, we're just going to get set up for uh, a second here. Just a quick one or two minute break. Uh, oh, okay, that's okay. Um, yeah, do you want to open something else up here? And then when you're ready, I can let you know when I can put it back on the screen. Okay. Uh, I have to sign into my Gmail though. Oh, let me give you a fresh window then. All right, thank you.
Um, I got it. I just I don't know how old I put it on. Like. Is it presenting mirrored okay, or do you want to um, um, present your piece? Um, um, I'm not sure. Like, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll mirror it. Um, okay, one second. Um, I'm sorry, what's your last name? Gomez. 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 That's great. Um, okay. Um, all right, everybody, we are back with our, our final in person presenter, Tiane Goins. Uh, give it up for Tiane. Hello everyone. Oh, I'm nervous. <laughs> um, my name is Tiane. My pronouns are they, them, and I'm a part of re reading, writing, and compiling zines. This is my first um, class at F S F P C. Um, so I'm very excited. Um, um so I'm an artist. Um, these are my artworks that I created. Um, I started getting taking art seriously in high school um, when I met my art teacher. So I kind of got into more into art then. Um, but as time went on, I kind of realized, oh, I love art, but I don't only like art. I like other things too. And that kind of led me into finding out um, SFPC, learning how like, oh, art could also connect to tech as well, since I have interest in that, those things that kind of made me more in interested in it. Um, the art pieces above, um, it kind of started like with everything going on in 2020, just just like emotions and like everything going on during that time. Um, the middle part is just basically me inserting myself in my art. Um, that's just me there. Um, just for representation purposes of, um, specifically for folks that are like fat or plus size um, and our like place in like, oh, a fashion and kind of the lack of representation in that. So I wanted to place myself in that since that I kind of barely see it. So I wanted to put it myself in the art and kind of help reflect other people that kind of see me as like, um, that not to see me personally, but also to see like, oh, this, this is someone that looks like me um, or them. Um, and I work with Arts Gowanas too, and it kind of helped me put a collection. Um, and this is the collection. This is just one of the pieces from the collection. And it kind of just piggybacks off what I was talking about with I Am Art. Um, just speaking about like, you know, um, plus size people in fashion and things like that. And this is where I kind of, um, they helped me put this um, piece of my collection up um, at affordable art fair, um, so they kind of helped me with that. They kind of did that in 2022. Um, so me having um, like virtual technology, um, I have interest in that. I feel like I always had interest in that, so I incorporated it in my art piece. So and I feel like that kind of like led me into oh finding out oh what other things I like besides art, and it kind of went into like oh I like virtual tech too. And I want to also be able to work with it in art as well in some way. And I kind of found out that I can do that in some way. Um, one of the projects I'm working on at the moment, I kind of just started coding probably like this summer. So I'm still like kind of like working on it. Um, this is like kind of the introduction to uh, one of the websites I've been um, coding on. And it's on Neo Cities. So um, if anyone's interested in like, you know, kind of building a website, um, it's kind of an alternative to GeoCities um, that existed um, in the 90s. Um, it's kind of a web hosting service and Yahoo bought it. Um, and it ended like in 2009. So here's the QR code to the um, website. So if anyone wants to see the actual animation of like the GIFs, from like during that time period, it actually shows it. Um, 
it's still under construction, so it kind of tells you. So it kind of reminds you, oh, this is a person under um, under this account actually trying to make it um, work. Um, and this is the book I purchased about, like, internet, like, during that time period. It's, like, a book from the 90s. Um, and I wanted to, like, I brought the book with me, so if anyone wants to, like, flip through it. Um, so, oh, <laughs> um, so I just been, like, just been, like, I'm trying to find my words. Um, so the reason why I had choose this, like, design in particular of, like, centering, like, from a specific time period, only because I feel like I kind of feel like growing up, my sister had, like, MySpace, and she was always coding on it. And I never really understood like what it what what it was specifically, and I kind of struggled with the language of like, oh, what is this called, um, and things like that. So that's basically what I wanted to do as well, since I didn't really get the opportunity to do so, because I was like, I was like in kindergarten at the time, um, and I wanted to do it myself, and I kind of found the language for it, kind of. I didn't find the language for it all the way, but so these are like examples of like some of the stuff that you would see like on that during on those websites during that time it's kind of an example of like those things that you would see on websites um and th those are just gifs of like just fun gifs for like a, you know emotional purposes um and these are just notes um that i have to another it's not a project but the notes are just more for um me finding the language of what i want to do i feel like i kind of struggle with like explaining like what I want to do, cause I feel like I'm all over the place. Um, it's not to say, well, I need me to over explain it, but I feel like when I'm in certain spaces of like art spaces, like what I showed before, like my art and showing it at affordable art fair, I feel like I have to know like what I'm talking about. And it kind of makes me feel like I have, have, I really have a problem with like over explaining things. So like when I don't feel like I have the language to explain, oh, this is what I want to do. Like what are the languages of like, oh, um, what do you want to get into? Who you ask you that question? Um, and they have ask you that question all your life when you're a kid. Like, what do you want to be when you grow up? And it's like, you always feel like you have to be in one box. Or you kind of just be exposed to certain careers and not other careers. And I feel like that was me, my experience. I feel like I was just exposed to certain careers. I didn't know, like, oh, careers like um, putting art and tech together existed. I didn't know that those things existed until, like, recently. So that kind of introduced me into getting more into this, and I didn't. I just thought that these things, like the book, and like how the way I coded, was kind of just left in the past. I just thought it was something that oh, th that's just stuck there, and you want to be able to use it in some way. So I wanted to be able to have that experience and actually use it in some way. Um, so just kind of figuring out, but that's kind of just what I'm doing at the moment. Um, so the notes just basically just say like oh. Uh, I want to like learn like history of like computers and internet over time and how social media kind of came to play and how like when you're using social media you now people kind of talk about um, social media is in a real place. You always get that comment from people like, well, it's not real, it's not that serious, it's not a real place. But me personally, I feel like it is a real place. I feel like social media kind of, we're there, but then it kind of connects back into our real lives and then vice versa. And I feel like talking about that I feel like it's very helpful for our experience of why certain conversations happen on social media. Like, that feels like mundane, but it's actually a bigger purpose to why we have certain conversations that are trending or phenomenons on social media, et cetera, et cetera, things like that. Um, and I was thinking about like things like how I collect physical media, like CDs, DVDs. I feel like they still have its, perp have its um, value, especially with streaming services getting expensive and stuff like that. I always like to collect stuff like that because I just feel like it's, it has its place. Um, it has its pros in its ways. Um, and I've just been like thinking about like, oh, how can I use um, older techniques from software from a long time ago and use it in my artwork, whether it's shift just or ASCII art and put in or thermal pr printing um, and dot matrix printing, being able to use those techniques and, and require it in my art in some way. Um, and I've also been thinking about, oh, like, 
media studies and stuff like that as well and kind of like, oh, like, in the internet age, yes, it's a lot of information, but it's also a lot of misinformation and how, like, you you don't un really understand, like, oh, what is real and what's not. And I feel like that's where media studies come into play of, like, me being interested in it because I always see that during, like, certain conversations on the internet. Um, so I also, like, want to get into that because... I just feel like it's important as someone that likes to be on the internet and kind of seeing other people that I know kind of fall for it. And I would just want to be able to tell them, oh, this is what's going on. Or even just for myself, or just in general, like interacting with other folks on the internet, saying that, oh, this is actually a reason why certain narratives are being put out as something and people keep pushing these things that is detrimental to marginalized communities specifically, whether it's on like news, um, different things in that nature and kind of just highlight those things. Um, but yeah, um, this is my last, um, this is just my social media um, um, accounts for like, whether well connection or community in some way. Um, um, yeah, so um, this is um, Bruno Butirati <laughs> from Georgia. <laughs> um, so you can take his advice. Um, but yeah, that's it. Yeah. Thanks so much, Tiana. Um, alrighty, going to shift back over to the Zoom uh, in a in a moment. Oh, I guess I have one more uh, video here. We have four left. Four or less should wrap up in the next maybe t 15 to 20 minutes. How, how we doing in person audience? <laughs> we chilling? Yeah, great. Um, okay, uh, one second. Let me get set up here and I'm going to shift the stream. Oh, hello. We love video feedback here. Um, going to shift this back. So I gotta do a little bit of resizing of things. Okay. Um, alrighty, and up next we have a video from Torhong um, uh, Guniali and uh, the and they are from uh, from in the infinite video class. Just let me get that going. Hi, my name is Bonnie Hall. I am here to do a little presentation of myself and also elaborating on why I'm super excited to be involved with um, as a PC and taking class this semester. Um, I prepared a slideshow to just for folks to get to know me better. Again, my name is Gilney Hall. I usually dabble around radio spaces and my background is in critical media studies, but at the moment I am exploring design and technology um, spaces in general. And most of my work is very much community-based projects and um, it's mostly inspired by Central Asian nomadic connections and beliefs, specifically through nature. I am really obsessed with um, Asian soap drama and reality TV shows, specifically East Asian, uh, Southeast Asian, and South Asian folks. And yeah, that's a little bit about me. To elaborate a little more on my radio space practice, I have a radio show where I focus on interviewing emerging um, young artists around the globe or the internet, wherever I can reach them, to kind of talk about their practice and their inspirations, um, sometimes even given like advices. And in between episodes, um, there will be music playing as well to kind of like spark a little bit of personality in that. And I got involved with Dub Lab radio station, I think 2022, um, or t actually early, tw late 2020, maybe 2021 ish. Um, but prior to that, my radio space was mostly on like college campuses, so more so a college radio person before um, working with independent radio stations. And um, I started actual 
um, I guess like hands-on projects or physical projects um, in my undergrad, I guess the last year of it, where I kind of tried to do this uh, two channel screen installations to explore the connection of constantly like traveling and like drifting back and forth with different like Western or Eastern perspective. And because I'm also an international student. So again, like it's very much inspired by my own culture and um, again, like traveling around in some senses. Um, and another project that I kind of, it's, it's the reason that I signed up for SFPC this time around for the Infinity Video course is because I want to explore what type of techniques that I could use to um, kind of elevate my current work um, or a video collage that I worked on um, recently. Um, it's this project called Till, which means tongue. And I kind of connected to like string instruments, mostly Central Asian string instruments, where the instruments itself is played in a um, more so familiar setting rather than performa performative settings. Um, so yeah, that was a lot of like video collage and archives that sparked my interest with working with how to kind of like tentatively grab attention or like encode some type of message within my video work. And um, yeah, that's that's about me. Super excited. Um, if you want to connect with me, here are my socials. And thank you so much for your time. Um, hope to see folks in person too um, for end of the, um, the course duration. And yeah, thank you. Thanks so much, Troy Hong. Um, all right, let's hop back um, up next from, also from the Infinite Video class, uh, give it up for Ken Marie. Here. I'm not sure how I uh, turn on my camera. But oh, uh, sorry. I I think I turned your camera off earlier, and uh, okay. now I can turn it back on, probably. Um, uh, let me see. Uh, can you try turning your video on? There we go. Hello. Hi, let me share my screen. Um, I'll keep my introduction pretty brief. Uh, I'm going to be presenting a video. It's like three minutes long, so I'll try to respect the four-minute time limit. Um, but my name is... Can everybody hear me okay? Is my voice sound okay? These headphones are kind of not the best. No, you sound great. Um, but yeah, my name is Ken Marie. Um, I'm based in Chicago. I am a visual artist, producer, and post-colorist. Um, a lot of my research center centers around um, colonial and post-colonial Africa and a lot of the visual influences in regards to color, um, filmmaking composition um, that is very rooted and inspired uh, by the diaspora. Um, my main joy is coloring. Um, I really, really enjoy um, learning different mechanisms of how color can evoke different emotions um, and just experimenting with color, mainly with film, but also with painting and color correction and things like that. Um, as mentioned, I'm a part of the Infinite Video course. And one of the main things that I'm trying to learn is just how to, um, Kind of fuse my personal expertise with a lot of the different softwares um, which I use separately. So um, with that being said, I'm just going to share this video. So this video that I made is um, called The Pill and it's like one of the first short films that I've made. Um, I've made a few since then um, and it's I would say it's 
probably not the best in quality because I, again, it's one of the first I've ever made, but I really do um, love it and appreciate it a lot because um, it was my first time experimenting with stop motion um, and color correction. So you'll see a lot of aspects of the film um, where I individually colored a lot of the stills and made it to um, stop. So let me, and if, you, um, if there's issues with the sound, just let me know. Is that possible? Can you guys hear that at all? Uh, we don't see it playing on our end. Oh, I see. How about no. Yeah, that's working. I can't tell if we can hear it or not. I'm putting it. And yeah, if it if you can't hear anything, just like uh I don't hear anything right now. Mm -hmm. uh, are you sharing with sound? Um how do I check if I is it in the um, sound? So might need to close out of share screen and then when you share screen again there is a little box on the bottom left that says share your sound as well okay cool all right stop share share screen share sound got you thank you no problem All right, we're here now. I see. Taking them now? No, not not yet. Why? I don't know. I guess I'm a little nervous. Did you need it? Yeah. I... It's the law to take those pills, Kathy. It's like I'm, I'm popping ibuprofen. It's I don't. Side effects vary for each person. What happened had nothing to do with your own body's responses. What happened to Shaw was. You know, I've never considered the possibility of death for me. At least I just. You are not going to know all that you've lost, Kim. You're not even going to remember. This is the way the world shifted. There are some things we don't understand. Chances are we not even going to continue. We, we don't even know how long any of this is going to last. I just don't understand how this is going to matter to me somehow. I, I, I might as well just, just die. what? <laughs> die? <laughs> Do you really think there's an end <laughs> to any of it? I'm not even saying it'll solve anything. I'm, I'm just saying that I think that there's better ways to Enough. handle it. I have to go. They're making rounds in my area in an hour, and I feel myself about to peak. When I get there, I expect to see you there with me. If you call a woman, African woman, no go green. She go say, she go say, I be lady, yo. If you call a woman, African woman, no go green. She go say, she go say, I be lady, yo. She go say, I be lady, she go say, I be lady, yo. She go say, I know be woman. She go
is the pill. Um, yeah, so I'm pretty, I'm pretty proud of that project. It was really fun to make. I was gonna yeah. say something about it, but I forgot what I was gonna say. So I'll just say that was that, and I hope that you enjoyed it. Yeah, that was sick. Thanks for sharing. Thank you. All right, thank you, Kim Marie. Um, uh, up next, uh, from the musical web, we have uh, Corey Dewan Sherard Jr. Corey, are you are you here? Yes, yes, I am right here. Can y'all hear me? Hey, hold on. One second. Uh, making sure. Okay, I have to quit and jump back in. Okay, I'll stall. All right, yeah. Give me one second. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, cool. Uh, great, great, great. Uh, what else is, is going on? <laughs> Do it. Oh, oh, this old thing. Uh, I, I don't know what you could possibly mean. Uh, uh, we can see if this, I imagine there's probably some, uh, some fun avatars we could get. Using avatars. Uh, well, perhaps I will come to regret that. <laughs> uh, this is less good than what was happening before. Uh, how about none? Cool, cool, cool. We're learning a lot here. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, no, I don't. Just kidding. <laughs> Maybe at the end. Welcome back. Hey, what's up? What's up? You got everything right. you needed? Hold on. You trying to, did you have to go into the, the preferences to get the share screen or something? Uh, can y'all hear me? Oh, we see your screen. Incredible. Okay, good. Can you hear me? Yeah. All right. Beautiful. Good. Okay. Let me go to the store. Okay, can y'all still hear me? Can y'all are, are we good? We're good. Awesome. Okay. So uh yeah, my name is Corey Dewan Sherrard Jr. Born in ninety six. Uh born and raised in Houston, Texas. Um I went to the University of Houston and attended the digital media program. And I graduated in 2020, which was a very trash time to graduate from college, uh, where I finished undergrad. And in between that time, I was really into art. I was really into doing freelance graphic design work, like flyers and um, making my own album covers for my music. Uh, right now, I am a radio host at K True LP 96.1 FM over at Rice University. Uh, I'm a lecturer at the Kinder High School for Performing and Visual Arts, um, which is famous for uh, Jason Moran went there, Robert Glasper went there, um, and I'm also a musician under the name Boye Rock, currently enrolled in Musical Web. Um, all right, so. Speaking of 2020, that was a very like pivotal time in my life because I finished my undergrad in digital media, but I've been loving art like all my life. So, you know, 2020 being a time of like a huge transition, you don't know what's gonna happen next. I was like, okay, um, this is a perfect time for me to dig into everything that I personally wanna do. So, um, dug harder into music started learning saxophone, um, 
started getting a little bit more into visual art, started learning how to code. And during this time, you know, I was doing a whole bunch of odd jobs. I was like, I was a groundskeeper. I was working at Amazon and, you know, I would, I'll work a night shift and then I get back to the crib and I was like, okay, I'm going to code and I'm going to go to sleep and I'm going to go back to work. And, um, over the past few years, I've had the opportunity to make work, um, in a lot of different spaces, working with a lot of different mediums. Uh, what you see here is some of my work. The two on the right, uh, I made while I was working at Amazon during my night shifts. I would take little scraps of like shipping labels and draw on them. And then I would like collage them together while like my managers wasn't looking. And, um, and here are a few paintings that I've been working on for the past, uh, well, actually, no, they're finished. I, I finished these in July and they showed at the Houston Endowment um, where I won the Jones Artist Award some years, uh, not some years ago, but some months ago. Uh, and on the right is like a little self-portrait. Uh, here are a few of the art things that I've done over the, I guess the past like one or two years. Um, I got a little bit more into art because of my partner. She is also a painter, um, doing a lot of like exhibitions in Houston. She's done something in like the, she's had a show in the Netherlands and a few other places. And uh, the artists that I've got to work with in that space as well, that she's, you know, known for a while is a Jamal Cyrus. And this is something that we created together. Let me make sure that the audio is going to work. Let me know if y'all can hear too. We cannot hear it. Oh, can you hear it? Can't hear it. Sorry, dude. Oh, you can't. Okay. Cannot. Ridiculous. Okay. <laughs> um. Okay. Uh, to inform you, you may have to stop screen sharing and restart while checking the box in the bottom left. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let me do this one more time. Yeah. Keep an eye out for the box. Share computer sound. Share sound. Let's go. Okay. They can't stop us. Let me get through this. <laughs> Okay, can you see again? Yes. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to play little snippets of these two. I'm going to skip a little bit too. Oh, damn. Y'all can't hear this either, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Can you hear it? <laughs> all you... right you know what brett okay forget the sound okay <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just gonna keep going um this might take a while but okay so me personally i'm really into collecting tapes um really into collecting books super into jazz um these are like some of my favorite like records uh some of the things i collect really into what um experimental afrofuturist music Films, really into what Terrence Nance is doing, really into Dean Journal um, and Sterling Tolls' Shelves exhibition in Detroit over at MoCAD in 2022 was probably like uh, a pivotal exhibition that I saw, at least for me, because I realized that, oh, I can combine music with art. Um, and here are some of the projects that I've been working on or been formulating. So. The Department of Black Phenomena is a blog, publication, broadcast, and engineering project of mine uh, is about collecting and creating a directory for Black phenomena within art and media throughout history. Um, it is an opportunity for me to like document that phenomena and to develop a 24-hour broadcast of that information through documentaries, video art, podcasts, interviews, music videos. Um, I was super inspired by 4.3, which is Boiler Rooms, like video project, uh, NTS, Dub Lab, uh, Alex Harsley's YouTube channel, Photo Direct, uh, Dweller Electronics, and 1201, which is Hassan Rahim's uh, design agency. 
Um, my own radio show, Steam, that broadcasts on K True LP, uh, where I prioritize like spinning contemporary jazz every morning, every Friday. Is the name comes from Archie Shep's Attica Blues record, Steam, which is one of my favorite songs. Um, and I personally make music under the name Boye Rock, which is my alias for whenever I make black world music or what I call black world music, which uh, was originally me putting out B tapes like how Knowledge does and Obliv, Doc Him, uh, Ross G. And now I'm exploring jazz and distorting those sounds, creating loops, rhythms, and themes that correspond to black radical politics, liberation, revolution, and Afrofuturism. So on the right hand side is one of the uh, flyers for the show that I'm having. I'm having one tomorrow where I have uh, Jamire Williams, who's a uh, jazz drummer he's put out records through leaving records and i think international anthem uh he'll be on the show tomorrow i'm linking with him and uh this is a cover for a record that i did this year which is a, a beat tape um and so yeah here we are at the end of my presentation uh i'm very excited about the musical web because i found out about sfpc in a very pivotal time in my life and you know finding out about mit media lab um this school about new ink and um yeah now i have a bit a stronger sense of purpose to place all of my interests from like literature music uh even coding software engineering i'm like learning all of this stuff in different places and trying to integrate it all into one um curriculum that fits for me and sfpc is really like the the go-to place for me um I'm based in Houston, but I've had the opportunity to visit at the uh, at recess this past summer. Um, and yeah, like hit my line. I'm really into music. I'm really into learning more about code and like figuring out what you all are really into. Um, I come to New York as often as I can. I don't. <laughs> I'll got a lot of money to do that, but um, <laughs> if if feasible. Uh, I would love to connect. I would love to build and create new things with you all. Uh, thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks so much, Corey. It was great, great jam with you at recess this summer. Um, I, I didn't realize till this presentation that to connect those dots that you, you made it to a class this fall. That's, uh, that's really exciting. Um, I think we have potentially one presenter left, although I'm not sure they were, they're on the West Coast and I'm not sure if they were able to get out of work. Quinn, are you here? Uh, okay, I think Quinn is not here, uh, which means this is the end of our program, everybody. Uh, let's, let's give it up for all of our presenters in person and online. Um, I'm gonna shift my uh, my stream back over to the soothing view of my face. Uh, yeah, there we go. This is what we want to see. We want to see me looking at me. Um, cool. Thanks so much, everybody. Uh, I, I was uh, Celine prompted me to to plug earlier. I, I have an event coming up next week. I, I host an event called. Uh, called Word Hack. It's at Wonderville. Uh, it's uh, about intersection of language and technology, a lot of writers and, and game makers and people making new poems out of code and that kind of stuff. Uh, uh, it's got also an open projector where you can do a little presentation like this one. Maury's visited the open projector before. Uh, hope hope you'll come through. It's next uh, next Thursday at Wonderville. Uh, thanks so much to our our online Twitch audience and to everyone on Zoom and to our amazing in person audience. Yeah, woo! <laughs> all right, everybody, that's all for me. I am gonna stop the stream. Have a good rest of your night, everybody. And uh, soon I will be only talking to people who are here in person. Okay.